Greetings and welcome to the Hamptons. My name is Sandra Kay and I am delighted and I'm honored to introduce you to my guest today, Kim Nichols, the Executive Director and CEO of the magnificent organization, Art Hamptons, celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. And we also have a special treat. We've got Cabbage, a little two month old kitten with us, and we have Ruth. Welcome, Kim. Thank you for having us. We're thrilled to be here with you. Thank you. So, Kim, I had the pleasure of meeting you last week at the beautiful state of the art facility in East Hampton. I'd like to begin by asking you to share with us the mission of ARF Hamptons. So the work of ARF is to uh, take care of homeless cats and dogs and find them forever homes. And we do that by uh, taking them in and making sure that they are well cared for with their daily needs, but also for their medical needs and any behavioral needs. So training is one thing that really sets ARF apart. And we focus on making sure the dogs are um, as well behaved as they're going to be. <laughs> okay. And can you share with us about approximately how many cats and dogs are rescued each year? And I know it varies uh, based upon the colonies of feral kittens, etc. But uh... it does. So ARF was established in, in 1974. And since then, we say we, there's been well over 30,000 animals that we've rescued. So that is... Um, based on the number of animals that we have rehomed. So that may be puppies finding their homes, kittens finding their homes, um, but also animals that come to us that are surrendered and rehoming them. Um, so that's a big part of what we do. The number changes from year to year. Sure. Uh, our average census is usually around 100 animals, and that's okay. a mix of cats and dogs. Sure, that's beautiful. Talk to us a little bit about volunteers and uh, what would a volunteer be responsible for? Because I think it's such a wonderful thing for people and young adults to be engaged in at ARF. So volunteers are, are the lifeblood uh, of ARF. We couldn't do it without them. So they come in and they do different things, like they walk the dogs. Uh, we have to walk the dogs a minimum of two times a day. It's, it's very important for them. Uh, we also have socialization where people come into the cat rooms and they help socialize the cats, especially with kittens or cats that haven't been around a lot of people. Uh, that's invaluable. Um, ARF opens up also for um, help with the everyday work. A, a lot of people really want to come in and see what it's like, so they'll help us clean. They also help us with enrichment toys, so they'll be filling Kongs and we freeze those, and it's a variety of things. What we try to do is find the volunteer and what their interests are, and, okay. and meet them there. Yeah, um, I saw that they fill out an application stating yeah. that, and that's that's wonderful. Yeah, and then you go through an orientation, and then there's there's a bit of training, because walking a dog or handling a dog that's a little over-enthusiastic is not always easy. Um, Ruth really wants to get down. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's an important part of it. And the other core piece of it yes. are the volunteers who are our board members. You know, okay. They are a, an essential part of it. They help us with fundraising. And then we have a bunch of different committees. So we do things like Pet Celebration Day, which is huge this year because it's yes. our 50th anniversary. Yes. And um, that will be run by uh, over 40 volunteers there. Um, another one is the Dog Walk. Last year, there were... Many, many people came to walk down to the beach with their dogs. We couldn't do that without the help of all of our uh, volunteers. Yes, so right. it, those who want to just celebrate with us and come to events, uh, we need volunteers there too. That's great. I also read that for children, there is an event called Lemon Off, where yes. kids can get involved and sell cookies and lemonade. And, yeah. and that one's especially near to our hearts because the kids love to set up a lemonade start, stand and all the donations go to ARF. And, and they're so creative with how they do it and compelling. So it's a great way to raise money and get the kids involved. Okay. Now you had mentioned to me when we that uh, it's kitten season now, yes. and uh, here we are with beautiful little cabbage. Um, we're going to take a look at a video uh, that talks about Operation Cat, and then we'll delve a little bit more into it. Jody, please uh, share uh, the video with us. 
Sticky was found stuck in a glue trap that had been set for rats. And this poor little thing was found by a good Samaritan. Then he came to ARF and they had to really soak him and bathe him. They do a complete medical checkup on him before it's allowed to go to the home of a, of a socializer. <laughs> and I'm a socializer. <laughs> this is my boy, the most adorable kitten you've ever seen. And he is just as sweet as he can be. I received this kitten um, when he was three and a half weeks old. And I will be the socializer foster of the kitten until he's about two pounds. He has to weigh two pounds. So we set the scale to zero so we know his weight every morning and then we put him in and hope that he stops wiggling for a minute. And this morning he weighed 1.13 and he looks like he's weighing 1.15 now, but that's because he's just eaten. This guy is going to go in, I think, next Thursday. He will be put out for adoption and he will fly out of ARF. It's always hard when you have these little darling things and you get so fond of them um, to give them up. But it's very rewarding to know that when I give him up, he's not gonna run from people, he's gonna run to people. He's so cute and he's so darling and he will climb all over the person that gets him. Now that's something that somebody's going to love. It's not a wild kitten that is, that is gonna be alone all of his life in your house. This is a kitten that will interact with you. And that's why it's so important to do it. The Operation Cat program took the kittens out of feral colonies and made them adoptable instead of turning them into breeders in the wild. It gives me cold chills to think of what would have happened to Sticky if the Good Samaritan hadn't walked by. I started a long time ago and the board members that have come on board, they brought a group of donors on that have made ARF into a fantastic organization. We can bring animals in that need help and we can be proud of the work we're doing. What we do need now is more medical help to have enough money for the right kinds of veterinarians because it's expensive out here to live. So we need money to bring the right people into our organization to do the work we need to do. We do need money and God bless the donors. Well, this is a little epilogue, maybe you'd call it a sticky log, uh, because we've decided to keep sticky. And that means that this is probably our first foster fail ever in the 30 years <laughs> that we've been fostering animals. I guess we're just a little stuck on sticky, if you know what I mean. <laughs> what a beautiful story and how endearing. Um... It's really, it's a special story because Zoe is the reason that Operation Cat exists and is so successful. And to know that she fostered so many animals and then fell in love with Sticky. Sure. Um, and it's just, we, we love watching sure. that Sure, well story. it's amazing just to see how they take a little kitten home and bottle feed the kitten and weigh the kitten until the kitten's ready to be put up for adoption. That's truly special. Yeah, it, it is a big part of what ARF does. So it, it's called TNR and it's Trap, Neuter, and Release. Yes. And what it does is, is help control the feline population, which is hugely important. Um, I, there are only so many resources out there. And luckily, Operation CAT through ARF it is, um, we're always asking for donations, but is well funded so that we have a van that can go out and do the surgical procedures. We can go to the areas where we're needed most. Um, and then the other piece to it are the number of volunteers who help us. They rescue kittens out in the community. So if you can find them young, then you can get them used to people and sure. they end up loving people and then we can find homes for them. That's wonderful. How often would you say a van would go out 
wherever, whether it's on Long Island or South Carolina, where there are colonies of feral cats, how often are they sent out? Okay, right now our, our van stays on Long Island and we uh, have gone as far west as Shirley, but um, mostly we're staying in this area where, where the need is. And, um, <laughs> sorry, hi Ruth. Sure. Um, Ruth. But uh, it, we go out, it, it's spring, so okay. it's kitten season. So we're going out with the van is actually out today. Yes. And we are really lucky that we have four per diem veterinarians. And this is something near and dear to their heart. And, and they love getting into the whole, uh, the, the excitement of it because operating on a van is not easy. Sure. Uh, and we have a staff that's entirely dedicated and they love going out and doing these. Um, the other piece are the people who manage the feral colonies, and they do a great job with it. So mm -hmm. what happens is if you let us know where the colony is and the number yes. of cats, and we can spay and neuter and, and vaccinate them, uh, we will provide food. Okay. So that's what we do in exchange for information about where but the you, feral colonies are. You keep are. them. Some, some come to ARF at, or are they just uh, put back into... So a, a feral cat is a wild animal. Feral. So yeah. they go back into the colonies. Um, okay. they, they have no interest in, they will maybe come near a human, but it's, it's dangerous for both them I and see. the human. Okay. Um, so they go back. If they're kittens, or if they are a cat that has been added to the colony because someone dumped it there, then it, it then we'll keep the cat and we'll find a home for them. Okay, that's beautiful. I know I just brought in, I saw the Time Magazine is actually, uh, hosting a whole articles all on cats and the love for cats and the mystery behind cats and how much pleasure um, people get and joy and how popular they truly are and how cats and dogs actually do get along. Um, so don't be afraid of that if you have a dog or a cat at home and you want another uh, animal to, to rescue. And once you learn about them, you start learning fascinating facts like cabbage is a female. So a female orange tabby is, is very rare. Arf right now happens to have three and they're all named for St. Patrick's Day. So it must be the luck of the Irish here. Right, and yes. We have uh, the female orange cats. Yes, cabbage. That is great. Um, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about dogs and dogs and the training, because I know you have some incredible classes of obedience and scent and different size um, for different breeds. Yeah. So um, it's especially important, and I'm going to use Ruth as an example. As you, you can see, she she's a little overexcited. She's Ruth has been rescued. She was a breeder dog, so she's never been outside of a cage. She was used to breed puppies. She's oh. not used to people. She's never really been anywhere. It was an interesting car ride over because mm -hmm. that was, other than being transported up to us as one of her first rides in a car, um, being here is, is completely new to her. So she's a little anxious, but the more time we can spend with her, the more socialization we can give her, sure. she's going to be a beautiful dog for someone. I mean, yes. she's very loving. Uh, she's got tons of personality, but she has absolutely no training. So and she's that's, sweet also. You can see the sweet, sweet. nature. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. why ARF is dedicated to training. And we have the William P. Rayner Training Center. So we have an indoor facility where we can offer classes like socialization, but also puppy obedience, basic obedience, intermediate obedience. And for those who are a bit more advanced, those are the scent games. So it's keeping your, your dog's mind occupied is, is hugely important in uh, keeping your dog happy and healthy. So we also do agility and we have small dog agility. So we have little equipment and then we have big dog agility and that's competition size equipment. Well, that's great. And I also read that even if you haven't adopted from ARF, you can pay for and uh, bring your, your dog to these classes. Yes, all our classes are open to the public. Mm -hmm. And if you have adopted from ARF, then yes. there is a discounted rate for you. Okay, that's great. Yeah, it's a beautiful facility, a great space, and uh, what a great training uh, facility. It's fantastic, and it, it, there's also a benefit in that during off times of the classes, we can bring the dogs that are in our kennel in there, and we can work closely with them and that makes them more appealing, more adoptable. You know, it's great to have a dog that already knows their basic commands. Yeah, 
That's great. And adoptions. You, uh, adoptions are 11 to 4 every day? Seven days a week, yes. That is terrific. Keep that in mind, everyone. 11 to 4 at ARF every day. You yeah. can find your, the love of your life, really. <laughs> you really can. <laughs> um, what I highly suggest is that you go to arfhamptons.org and you can see all the animals that we have and check back because it changes regularly. So you update that at least once or twice a week? It, you say? Yes, it depends on the animals coming in and their availability. Okay. So when a transport comes in, then they are in quarantine for seven days and we are doing a complete medical check. We may be spaying, neutering them, um, and then they become available. Uh, there's other dogs that need a bit more time and attention. So um, like Ruth, because she has some medical issues uh, from being overbred, sure. uh, but when she comes up for adoption, I know that she will go quickly. But that's one of the things that's that's essential to ARF is making sure that they are fully vetted. And uh, they are also you before you um, give them to a new owner. Um, they are they, they are microchipped is also yes they're microchipped. Yeah. And then we have meet and greets, so we don't do adoptions without the people coming in to meet the animals. And then that's everyone who lives in the house. We ask that they come by to meet the cat or dog. And if there's other animals in the house, yes. then we have them do a meet and greet also. So would that take place um, at the facility? They would bring their, their animal their, that's presently at home? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We want to do everything to make sure it's a success for both the dog or cat and the people who adopt them. Okay. And in terms of uh, the board and some of the other ways to donate, um, there's estate planning. Talk to us a little bit about some of the, the Kit Kat pro Fund. The Kit Kat Fund was established uh, for a show dog um, who had a lot of medical issues and it's essential. It helps us with dogs that come in with extreme medical issues. Um, okay. It's been invaluable to us. Um, and that's something that you can support the Kit Kat Fund. There's also, uh, we take regular donations. We take birthday donations. We've had a few people who say, you know, especially recently a 10 year old who said, I, I don't need any gifts. I don't want any gifts. Can you support ARF? Which is oh, is wonderful. That fabulous? Um, yes. The and other way is bricks it. that you can have uh, yeah. in honor of or memory of one of your animals. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is nice because then you can come visit. Yes. Um, the other piece is events. So come to the dog walk. Come to the Bow Wow Meow Ball, which is our big fundraiser. And come that's taking place when? The Bow that's Bow. August 17th. Okay, prime time. And then uh, come to Pet Celebration Day. Uh, that's May 18th, and that we're asking people to bring their dogs back in, to come by. We love to see how the puppies grow up. We love to see how the animals change once they're in the home and really they settle in and they they, they, it's just that's a happy ever after sure. that we love to see. Yes. Um, it's the 50th anniversary, and there's so many cats and dogs that have been adopted. Um, so come by and visit. Yes, for sure, for sure. Let's just also talk about the benefits of the joy. What what a dog and a cat does for for human beings. Um, the uh, today there are so many service animals that are uh, that people take with them wherever they go. Dogs uh, are immeasurable in terms of therapy. Animal therapy is a real thing. Um, they sense your emotions. They're there. Yes, yes, yes. We're talking to you too. There, there's a study that says a cat's purr will lower your blood pressure. Yes. So there are, I mean, anyone who has had a pet knows when you come home and they greet you, there's nothing like that. That's right. You know, it, they become an essential part of the family. That's right. And are beloved. Yes. And, uh, Yes, they make us smile. They are wonderful. Yes, and so we will um, be moving forward with um, some other uh, live events that uh, we can engage in as well. That's great. Yeah, um, and I, I encourage anyone. I mean, you don't need to come to our events, as you said. We're we're open eleven to four every day. You can come in. You you don't have to come in and um, walk away with an animal. I mean, it's really important that we socialize uh, these little sweeties because it helps get them adopted. So come visit us. Yes, and there's also the thrift shop. 
Oh, yeah. In Sagaponic, <laughs> that uh, people can donate their furniture, their jewelry, artwork, mm -hmm. and the proceeds go to ARF. Yes, that, that is a, a big part. It helps us a lot with fundraising and awareness. Uh, there's, there's a whole section downstairs that has, um, our, our manager calls them littles. Um, the, what is it? It's housewares. It, it's all kinds of things. And so... And the furniture, will they pick up the furniture, did I read? Yeah. We will that pick is, up and deliver terrific. for People, a that's, small that's a fee. Yeah. Uh, and we are looking for everything. And everything goes to support the animals, which is great. Yes. Okay, Ruth. <laughs> and uh, volunteers can also work at the thrift shop and help with the, uh, there's also merchandise that people can buy when they go to the uh, facility and uh, purchase, for example, a Frisbee for the dog, leashes, there's sweatshirts, there's hats, there's balls, yes. everything. It's 100% uh, community funded. 100%. Um, and that's ARF Mart. You can also find it online. So okay. if you can't come in to visit with us, you can shop online. Same with the thrift store. You can see a lot of the items on our website. So again, go to arfhamptons.org. You can check out the animals. You can check out the furniture, Arf Mart. Plus, you'll learn a lot about the events that are coming up. Yes, great. The other place, you, yes. you'll be seeing Arf a lot around this summer. Um, we, we have an adoption van, so we love to go out and be in parades and get our animals out there. And there's such joy in being out in the public and bringing our, our cats and dogs out. Yes, that, it's very special. And look look how the, the animals are now adapting. We were a little nervous at first what was going to happen, um, <laughs> being that Ruth has been essentially in a cage, and yes. she is doing great. And this is a little kitten, two months old, that is purring and happy. And it just shows what the love can do for, for the humans and for the animals. They sense everything. They, they know when they can trust you. Exactly. They and, feel it. They have the instinct. And I love to see someone with her spunk and she's been in a cage and she's yes. ready to go now. So this is her character coming out and I love seeing it. Yes. Um, Kim, anything else that you might like to share with us about ARF and about what the audience should be aware of? So one of the things, uh, ARF is turning 50, as we mentioned, and we'd love to hear stories from people, stories about your adoptions or stories about your parents adopting an animal. I um, was just talking to someone who remembers the founding of ARF and, and our, our three founders who started out by fostering animals. You know, they saw a huge need after the summer when people abandoned their animals and that started the whole thing. And here we are 50 years later, providing comprehensive care for these animals. Yes. And I, I just am so excited about the future to see what we're able to do going forward. But it all started with three women who really loved animals and huge support from this community. We couldn't do it without the yes, support. Every time now I'm mentioning it to someone, they say, oh, I adopted a cat there. I adopted a dog from there. And it's just, it's great how the community is so engaged yes. on, on such a, and wonderful that the recent renovation, it's such a beautiful and clean facility yeah. and so, and expansive. Yeah, and it works great for our animals. So the dogs all have indoor space and outdoor space. The cats have their private rooms with, yes. you know, all their climbing on the wall. Yeah. They, they love it. They, they're very comfortable there. Um, but nothing beats being adopted and loved in a home. Sure. That's true. And um, food and towels. There are things that people can drop off to ARF to also donate besides uh, money, if you will, and uh, volunteer. There are other... Uh... Yeah, we, so we're always looking for cat food, dog food, dog toys, uh, and um, they eat 11 to 4 every day. You can yes. drop off at ARF. Uh, one of the things that ARF does, which is fantastic, is the food donations that we get. Yes. We bring them to the local food pantries. So if someone is in need of pet food, they can collect it there Will we'll, they're there picking up for their family because, again, this is another family member. Sure. Um, and we want to make it as easy as possible for people, for the pets to remain at home. You know, we, we've seen a number of surrenders lately from people losing their housing or um, 
it, we're seeing more economic reasons than behavioral issues, and, and that's heartbreaking. So anything we can do to help these animals remain at home is important. Yes. Well, they are wonderful. Thank you, Kim. This was great. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge and everything that ARP does for the community, for human beings, for the animals. The rescue is uh, just such an important uh, facet for community and uh, society at large, the overpopulation and um, keeping them and giving them happy and healthy homes. Well, thank you for giving us this opportunity to highlight the animals and what ARF does. And um, I, I, I'm just, I'm so grateful for you to give us this platform to share our message. Yes, thank you. This is a pleasure. And everyone, please visit ARF. Enrich your life. Save a life. It will make you smile. The animal will become part of your family and will be with you. And it's just heartwarming. So. Spring is in the air, everyone. It's time to take a visit to ARF. Thank you. <laughs>